All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Nighty Mac, the 90 Minute Art Challenge number 43. Holy smokes. I'm your host, Bobby Chu. I also have on here my co host, Miss Aseki. Yay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Sorry. I always <laughs> pause. I always pause at that point. I'm like, oh, maybe Miss A wants to say hi or something, and it gets all awkward. <laughs> all right, so uh, today we also have on here a guest artist. As always, today's guest artist is, let's check it out it's wendy tan she just came Yay. on for an interview not too long ago we love wendy she's so awesome look at all of her awesome stuff you could check out wendy on instagram at wendy tan sw and you could follow her now before you forget okay so what's today's challenge what is the naughty mac uh well Every week we have some sort of subject and sometimes multiple times during the week we have a subject and we have 90 minutes to sketch, paint, riff off of this. And as well throughout this video, you're going to see us, the three of us, tackle the 90 Mac here as well. Today's subject is one of uh, Wendy's, I hear, one of Wendy's favorite subjects, which is a fun little dog, right? Or this one's kind of a big dog. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going to be painting this, and then when you're done, you could upload it to Instagram where we'll be able to see it if you hashtag it 90 Min Art Challenge and just upload it. Once you upload it, uh, we'll be able to, everybody will be able to see it. And today, I, you know, since like sometimes I have all these tabs open, I go to the tabs, they got to refresh. This time, haha, I planned ahead, mm. put them all in Photoshop. Nice. So this was cool. This was um, Lisa from Blackpink. And this one is the board. This is the 90 Mac, like one of the 90 Mac Discord boards because we also have Discord on here. And you can see that everybody, you, you can see this one has already started. Uh, a whole bunch of people painting and drawing. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Div. <laughs> that looks really good. That's very accurate. Just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, fun stuff. You get to paint and draw with yeah. all sorts of other people. Everybody's welcome. So that's what that was. Everybody was drawing on the same board at the same time. Super cool. I like this one. It's just fun, isn't it? The whole entire mm, challenge I behind. Really? Yeah. And the whole entire challenge the behind really this nice. was um, to use blue for skin tone as much as you can. And it's cool because it looks like skin tone, but it's blue. Anyways, you could go back in the channel there and find that one. Here's a house. Here's another Kylo. Kylo looking sorry again. And then uh, <laughs> this one, this one. Boom. Really nice. Way to go. Nice. Bunch of different oh, versions. Oh, that one's good. Yeah. Very, very cool. All right, so um, that's the 90 Mac, and why don't we start with our own here as well. And here we go. Okay, so for this one, um, I'm in the bottom right-hand corner. Masse is underneath the image, and then uh, Wendy, you're on the upper right-hand side. Yeah. What else should we tell everybody? We also want to tell everybody, uh, join us in Discord. Like I was saying, you can see on the bottom mm -hmm. of the screen, you can see Discord. You could join us there, or you could write a, in a question. Today, from now on, I've changed the hashtag. You, usually, you go to slido.com and uh, type in uh, ChewStream as the hashtag, but I haven't done kind of like a ChewStream in a long time, so I just changed it to 90 mm -hmm. Mac, okay? 90 Mac. And you could ask your questions there, and we'll answer them mm. live. Um, yeah. And I guess now would be a good time to kind of welcome the Discord uh, community to come and join us for a nice little chat, you know, chat about art, life as an artist, whatever, and um, as we paint and draw. Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> hey, Bobby. Hey. 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 Great. 
Good to have everyone. <laughs> hey, Bobby, random side note. I was just reading the chat. Apparently, Wendy and I are in the wrong column. Oh, my gosh. Middle. My bad. Oh, you you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't mind being Wendy. <laughs> <today>. <laughs> no. uh, yeah. At first, I think it was Wendy joined in the Zoom, and then I just kind of assumed that she would be in the middle. So my mm. mistake. My mistake. Yeah, we usually like, oh, you know, go on each side of our guests yeah. and interrogate them from each side. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Yeah. But yeah, this was a fun subject to draw. It's like... I like I really enjoy drawing like really cute animals so I'm glad Wendy chose this image because um, generally I, I give um, options for our guest artists to you know pick from and yeah this was this was like a really fun cute um, subject so I'm very curious to see like how everyone draws their dog because um, Bobby you did yours very differently and um, <laughs> you know Wendy and I we, we did the dog but then it's like kind of like different styles so that was that was really fun to see at the end yeah lately i've been getting into like um more imaginative stuff you know so i'm trying to like mm -hmm. switch it up i'm trying to take each one of these subjects and see how i could put my own little spin on it how to how can i make it kind of like you know fun for myself um not that it's not fun but more fun <laughs> more fun maximize the fun uh, yeah fun and, with some challenges yeah and that was definitely like um way more challenging way more challenging because i didn't decide to just change the creature i tried to change all the colors which was a bit more yeah. than i could you know i i feel like for 90 minutes that's kind of tough if i if this was like an assignment i had a full day on it then no problem but um mm -hmm. yeah it's really good exercise and so yeah it's like Oh, go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say it's like pushing your limits and seeing like what you know and what you understand, because I think just by looking at the image, you you can already like um, break down which way the light's coming from and you understand the form. So because you're able to understand that, then, you know, making it a bit more um, like very, a, a bit different and more creative, like kind of like pushes that um, artistic side of you. So. I thought that was a pretty cool thing that you did for this one. You know, uh, yours right now, the silhouette, could, if I squint my eyes, it could almost turn into a cool kind of seal, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's funny. It's, yeah, it's like the, the big uh, chest with the small back and a little tail. And then Wendy... Um, what do you remember what was kind of going through your mind when you're first starting to paint with us? I actually uh, wanted to paint exactly as the same as the reference. Then I started to think like the dog really do, do look like my my own dog. So <laughs> I changed a bit of the face <laughs> to become my dog. Yeah. yeah. He has the very strange rectangular shape of his uh, face. So uh, sorry, not rectangular, but the triangular shape. Yeah, so I added it. Yeah. So well, yeah, cute. I've seen the dog appear in some of your um, your Instagram posts and such. <laughs> there we go. There's your guy. It really oh, does yeah. look like him. Huh? Yeah, oh he does God. look like a triangle. So cute. <laughs> yeah, Very the shapes cute. are so fun. Yeah. Awesome. I like his fur. Uh, yeah. And you got the puppy version. Very cool. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, these next bunch of 90 Max get really fun, right? Like we did this one um, the other day with Lyndon, and it was like so different. The final, mm. the final uh, imagery it was so different from one another, but very, very cool at the yeah. same time yeah that's that's one to look forward to i think at this point we could probably go to one of the first questions and the first question here comes from cj Russoto, regular 90 mac uh <laughs> attendee he, 
uh, CJ writes, uh, what was the first movie that you felt your time was wasted? Mine was, <laughs> mine was Rise of Skywalker. Uh, and he puts in brackets, Fall of Fake Walker, as I like to call. And was it the visuals or the story that made you kind of like feel like you wasted your time? That's harsh. That's harsh. I, I got to say, you know, because um, there's a lot of people, a lot of very talented people that worked on that. And the thing that we don't, like the average person doesn't know is how hard it is to make a movie, mm -hmm. not just to actually make the movie, but to get the funding, to pass all of the road bumps, you know, all of the steps to get your movie made the way that you want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I and always feel I bad, like, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like there's still like a lot to appreciate, even if it's like a movie that you don't particularly enjoy, like personally, because like maybe there's other things in it that you could kind of like enjoy, like whether it's the, the costume design or the lighting, um, maybe it's the props, like there, like you said, there's like so many people that go behind these movies, like there, there's, there is a lot of like craft and art that's put into it. So let's switch the, question. you know, maybe let's switch the maybe question. Maybe it's not a waste of time. Yeah. It, to the exact opposite. What was, what was a movie that you really appreciate the visuals, even though the movie in general was deemed, you know, not a hot movie by, by the public. Right? Like, what was a movie that you really liked that everybody else kind of thought was dumb? <laughs> like, for me, I don't know if everybody thinks this one was dumb. And I'd love to hear the community if they've heard of this movie. But um, Big Trouble in Little China. I love that movie. I don't know that movie, but that was with I'm kind of curious. That was with Kurt Russell. Mm -hmm. And um, and he had to he had to save you know the the woman in uh, Sex in the City or Sex and the City um, that slept with the most guys the blonde one <laughs> she was the love interest. Mm, I, I hear some laughing from the Discord. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming they they know. I never really <laughs> watched Sex in the City. Yeah. But, but one of them. But I really loved it because of all the costumes. It's so cool. It's so cool. Mm. And and the characters. And the characters, you watch it, it's, there's no doubt in my mind that those characters heavily influenced, um, like, Mortal Kombat, maybe even Street Fighter 2 a little bit. Mm. Does nobody in Discord remember this movie? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you guys can say something too. Yeah, feel free to unmute yourselves and join in the conversation. Or if you have a movie where it's like, you know, pretty much everybody thought it was dumb, but you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. So I feel like the big little trouble in China is much like the uh, similar vein of uh, the uh, the airplane and. Uh, uh what's the other one oh, airplane that, that's uh, old that's old i don't yeah. even know if i've seen that i think i might have seen that yes. one time when i was a little kid like the satir satire like uh uh humor yeah it's kind of like scream everybody that's like too young to know <laughs> it's kind of like scream how or no not scream scary movie was to scream you know, yes. airplane, yes. it was very satire, it was very just like ridiculous fun. Uh, what was that like actor that play uh, the dirt, the three to four gun? Oh, um, like, yes, that's something Nielsen. I forget. Leslie, Leslie, Nielsen. Leslie, yeah, 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 right on. Yes, very um, lovely <laughs> and funny. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Everybody's gonna like troll me probably, but I liked uh, 
the last Star Wars movie. I did. You know why? Because they had lightsabers. It has such an attachment <laughs> to me, you know? For my childhood, mm. if there is a lightsaber in the movie, honestly, it doesn't matter anymore. I'm so just like, mm -hmm. it's just smiles. It, that's like, I guess you're just a fan and it's like part of your childhood and you can't help but, you know, have that inner child and you just love anything that's Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, I found it, uh, the Naked Gun. Right, the Naked Gun. And uh, Scary Movie 3, Dracula, Dead Loving, and uh, Spy Heart. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was a movie not... where it was like, I really loved the look of it? Um, well, actually, I don't know. I was really looking forward to it, and it wasn't what I thought it would be. Even though, like, the effects were beautiful, was um, The Last Airbender, the live action, mm. right? I don't know if anybody remembers watching the commercials <laughs> before they watched the movie. I was excited. I didn't watch it. I think um, just I, the, my instinct was like, oh, no. <laughs> So, um, like, because I watched the uh, the animated, like, you know, the original version, and I loved it so much, I didn't want to have, like, a bad image of, you know, like, the live action that was made. So I kind of, like, held myself back from watching it. But, yeah, I'm sure, like, you know, the effects and stuff look great, but I heard the, just overall, the story was, like, you know, or the, the way it was filmed was not that great. I don't know. I didn't watch it, but... <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, another one on that same vein, something I never, I didn't watch. I wanted to watch it, and then I lost interest. Was live action Mulan? Still never watched mm. that. Right. I was so excited yeah. about that movie coming out because, again, it's, you know, it's part of my heritage and stuff, and mm -hmm. there's not that many mainstream, like especially Disney movies that tackle that kind of thing. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I do agree on that. You're right. Yeah. I watch it, yeah. Mm. I watch it. And it feels like it's a really a big send-off of the original animated version. Ah. Mm. Well, I definitely Very heard different. a lot of backlash from the Asian community, the Chinese community, just going like... <laughs> Is this what yeah. you think Chinese people are? <laughs> you know, like, oh, my honor, my honor has been, you know, taken away from me. <laughs> we live in the 20, we live in 2021, you know, mm -hmm. just saying that it sounds like you're in the future and to kind of um, think of us like that, that's kind of funny. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not like insulting to me, but it is kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. When, Wendy, do you have any movies in mind where you like, where uh, maybe it wasn't known to be a good movie, but um, you enjoyed it anyways? I don't think I have that because a lot of movies I actually do enjoy it. But to be honest, I really do, do not enjoy Mulan at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you watched so, it? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I watched, yeah, she it. watched it. <laughs> I agree. It, uh, I, I don't know. Because of the trailer, the first thing, uh, we really, like, a lot of our Chinese community, like, in Malaysia, they do talk, like, they are not historical, historically accurate at all. Mm. Especially when they show the Hulu. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it in English. It's actually the, the, the first scene that they show in the trailer, the round building. It's actually not, not supposed to be that period and we thought like mm. oh no they have fun why yeah i i heard that a yeah. lot too where they just historically was like just miss they were just not accurate mm. at all where they would kind of just mishmash a bunch of different eras and i guess like things that maybe they thought look good they were like oh why don't we just put that in and i feel like that's just a bad represent representation of yeah. um you know a, like uh, Chinese culture and and it's kind of weird because like 
if you think about it, especially like um, <clears throat> with like how people talk about uh, like cultural appropriation and um, mm. you know being like getting your facts right, especially about culture, you would think that like there would have there would have been a bit more thought behind that. But um, yeah, it's just a shame that like they couldn't yeah. really you know it's, it's uh, hit the spot with it. that. Yeah. Hey, on the flip but, side of things, can I show mm -hmm. an example of what I feel is really good um, mm -hmm. representation by somebody that isn't Chinese for a Chinese mm -hmm. kind of movie? Hold on a second here. Let me show you. This is coming out. Um, uh, I was just good. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I'll just add later. I was going to say this is coming out this Friday. In, I believe it's in China. I'm not sure if it's anywhere else, but this was this was a film that was done, you know, Sony Animation as well as a bunch of other stuff in uh, another. I forget the other place in China that worked on this as well, but the director is Chris Oppelhans, uh. right? And Chris Oppelhans, obviously, he's Caucasian. He lives in L.A. Um, oh <laughs> but for this movie, no, me. it's like, huh? Oh, it's what's going on <laughs> that something happened. Is everything okay? Yeah. I think because you played the uh, uh, video, it slowed down your internet, but I think we, we got most of the, oh, okay. 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 Yeah. My bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. So anyways, the director, his name is Chris Oppelhans works in you know lives in la um but during this film he moved to china he moved mm -hmm. to china and lived there for two years to make sure that the authenticity comes across mm -hmm. right that that is way beyond what you need to do so i encourage everybody to check out that film yeah wish dragon i actually was able to um listen to chris Oppelhans, uh talk during Lightbox. Oh, so and good. yeah, he just, yeah, so amazing. It's just like how he really immersed himself in that culture and he surrounded himself uh, with the people, like the locals even, and just got someone to, you know, kind of like guide him through um, the place that he stayed. And he got to hear like different stories. So he was able to take those stories that he could never ever experience in, you know, the States and try to like, uh, incorporate that into the film and also like getting a bunch of artists who was born there and um who can tell like there's they're like little things like you know running across uh like a street with this toy that like only people who live there would know like little things like that i think um it's really appreciated by uh people who you know who came from there who grew up with that culture so yeah, I'm really excited to see that movie and just, you know, just see hearing how much like work that he put in and his whole team. It's it's definitely one of those movies that's like very anticipated. And Jackie Chan's part of it. Everybody loves Jackie yeah. Chan. He's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the other thing that I wanted to add with the Mulan thing was like, um, even though it was very unfortunate that, you know, it didn't really do well and represent the culture maybe that's a good way to learn like what how how it should be made run, uh, right from here on with like movies like that especially like coming from hollywood because it's it kind of goes to show like um the importance of representation and getting things done right <laughs> to make like you know the audience yeah happy especially like audience who come from that background i have a question regarding the mulan though because in this industry we often hear cool over correct and even though mulan the live action was not done correctly what do you think made that an issue is it just not cool enough maybe the story was not well written enough here's Perhaps my issue with it you know does the movie look like um it's supposed to be historically accurate or does it look like it's supposed to be fictional right because how they mix it up 
Mulan, obviously, there is historical significance if you know anything about the the backstory. Like that, you know, that's a very important story to um, you know a lot of people. Uh, and then mm-hmm. it's kind of like okay, I'm gonna throw a big giant monkey wrench in this. Has anybody watched Bridgerton on Netflix? Because I have, yeah. that one's interesting. I don't know what the right answer is, but my own feelings with it is that when I watch it, it looks like something that is somewhat historical, right? It doesn't look like Avatar. It doesn't look like a fictional world, like a completely fictional world. It looks like a fictional world based on history. Now, is it good to all of a sudden... Um, you know, put things that are not historically correct at all into these historically depict like these these shows that feel like they should be historical. I don't know, so don't kill me on this. But these are just <laughs> thoughts, you know, because like, mm-hmm. say twenty years down the road, little kids mm-hmm. they watch this film and they go, "Oh yeah, Victorian days, those are great." You know, everybody got along together. Black people, Chinese people, white people, we all wore those funny wigs and we all got along together. Is that mm-hmm. right? Is that what we want to kind of tell the future, you know, the future generations? Right? Kind of, this is a very yeah. needy kind of question, though. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. man, what is the right answer there? Yeah. Because it's also good to have diversity. We all know this yeah you know like name two two uh american movies where the asian leading man kisses a non-leading asian girl or non-asian leading girl okay just two movies in all of american uh, cinematic history if you could do that in the next two minutes i'd be surprised and you could put in the chat you could tell us in the in the (laughs) in the discussion here you know Mm -hmm. so yeah it is very important to have that representation but Mm -hmm. i don't know it's a funny i'm like playing both sides here (laughs) yeah good to be open about both i think i do agree with bobby on that because if um, the latest film or movie that doesn't involve in diversity, even though it's historically correct, it feels not. I don't know how to say. It, it's like it's not um, suitable for what we what we are right in this um, period. It's, it's it doesn't feel like twenty twenty one. I don't know how to say. It. Mm-hmm. Hi, Bobby. Hi. So um, I like where the conversation is going. And you remember yesterday when we talked about Black Panther? Yeah. You know, I, told, I told you something like, such movies are bound to be problematic. Yes, Black Panther is fictional, 100% fictional. But there is a tendency for people to watch it and assume that is how people in Africa talk. You know, there is this, uh, those are some of the problems that uh, we found with the movie the kind of representation that was delivered and how there is the sense for people to uh, conflate what is fiction with what is real you know there is a tendency to say you know people in africa were kings and queens and there is this very annoying accent that every hollywood character who is supposed to be african uses and you know it's it's very similar to what you're saying now uh, some mm. 10 years in, into the future, someone will watch the movie and assume some of these things were historically accurate. It will flatline a lot of them. Yeah. 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 It's it's funny because I remember um, stories of like people trying to book tickets to Wakanda after that movie. Like, I want to go to Wakanda. And they thought it was a real freaking place. That's so funny. Grown adults unbelievable <laughs> mm-hmm. hi 
Hi. Uh, I have uh, one thing to say as well. Uh, you know the Netflix Witcher, The Witcher. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm a big fan of the game. It's really good. You know. Then not. Let's not talk about cyberpunk. It's uh, <laughs> something totally else. But The Witcher was amazing, especially The Witcher Three. And then when the Netflix came out with uh, The Witcher uh, series, uh, since uh, I'm Polish and you know I'm very into uh, the culture and stuff. Obviously, my culture. I'm, I'm a patriot, so I'm into the culture and stuff. And I was, I was expecting it to be awful, and it turned out pretty pretty awful. In my opinion, like I was very disappointed in the fact that it didn't have any po Well, it had one Polish actor who died at the beginning and it was kind of disappointing because because it's 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 based on polish culture and stuff the witcher is so it was kind of disappoint you know yeah. it's actually like people in poland look a bit different than other white people like just slavic people look a lot different than let's say british people so i was very disappointed with the fact that there was no diversity in terms of like at least like getting some slavic actors into it so it, it could be you could feel that kind of vibe of like oh yeah this is about like the slavic culture you have the slavic demons and all that and overall it was this show was just very confusing uh and i hated it <laughs> i was so disappointed <laughs> with it it was so sad you know what's funny oh. about what you just said and what we're talking about here is like yeah hollywood you know there's you definitely heard uh, when people say Hollywood just keeps putting out the same stories over and over again. Like at some point in your life, you've heard that, right? And it's like, but there are so many more stories to tell, right? Like I want to learn about Polish culture. I want to learn about especially like historical, accurate, you know, depictions, stories that happen in those times, in those places. That's freaking fascinating. And that was one of, like, the most fascinating things when it came to, like, any movie for me. It's like, uh, what, what are they doing over there? Or what did they do over there? Oh, that's so cool. Wow, that's so different, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like how yeah, they're was... starting to tell oh, stories sorry. from different people's points of view now as well. It's like you could tell the same story, but tell it from that slave's point of view now, you know, tell it from the butler's mm. point of view, and then you got an amazing movie again. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's so mm -hmm. many opportunities for so many more very cool stories that we've never seen before on the big screen. I always wanted yeah. to kind of see a movie about World War II, but in Poland, so all of the Holocaust stuff and stuff like that, because I went to Holocaust and I got interested in well, I'm interested in my culture, obviously, so I just, I would like to see a movie which kind of represents that and the actual tragedy, not like Pearl Harbor stuff, which in comparison to many stuff that happened in Europe, is it's very mild. Like if you, if you look what happened in France or, uh, well, France, Italy, Poland, it was something totally else. So I would like to see that as well. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I would love mm -hmm. to see a lot more uh, movies that take place in like India, in Pakistan, in like, y you know, the Middle East, like those kind of with those kind of with those people being the stars and uh, hopefully even like some leading male actors that are actually considered um attractive in these stories i'd hate to say it somebody you know i was saying before hey name two movies you know where the leading asian guy kisses a non-asian woman right and mm -hmm. only one person wrote something and that was harold and kumar one and two let me point out something <laughs> harold and kumar those both those characters are not meant to feel like those are the attractive characters. Those are the comedy, comedic mm -hmm. characters. So even after all this time, there's still not one person that can name somebody with like an attractive leading, you know, um, Asian male. Either, you know, brown, Chinese, whatever, 
um, it's all good because that is such a huge hole in storytelling, I got to say. And, mm -hmm. and there's many of mm -hmm. others as well, of course. There was <laughs> one that um, I was struggling to remember the name of, but I think it's called Last Christmas. It was a movie with uh, Henry Gold Golding and um, Amelia Clark, I believe, were the leads in that movie. It was a romance one, but it wasn't an action or something to, so they, beyond that right it's it's difficult is what i'm saying right you can't <laughs> name two yeah 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 i think though can i um i think though like if we want to actually learn about other cultures and see movies based on those cultures the easiest solution is actually like go international and see what you know indian films are about or what uh, middle eastern the films are about you know, mm. and that's what really I love it, about Netflix right now. You know, it's yeah. like they I'm seeing so much more foreign content now because of Netflix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's really interesting because culturally the storytelling is different. So suddenly you have a whole new interest, interesting story that maybe, you know, the locals may be found like mundane. But for me, like sometimes it's very interesting because it's a fresh way for me to tell a story or to approach something just because culturally uh, the director takes it from their point of view. And it really, mm -hmm. you know, opens up new ways to think about stuff. You know, what's interesting mm -hmm. was um, when uh, uh, Toniko Pento Pentoha, uh, I was talking to him in the interview and he was talking about pitching stories. And then he was like, yeah, you gotta, in his opinion, you gotta pitch the story and then you got to tell them why it's you that needs to make this story and not anybody else, but you, you know, and that really, that's very interesting to me. I don't know if that's like a Netflix kind of thing. Cause he's at Netflix right now, or cause you can definitely feel Netflix and their, their, um, their mission to make everything very diverse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes um, sense at the same time, they may like an idea, but they will want to go with some with some other name to direct the film or to be the project head, you know, that they feel more comfortable with. So you want to make sure that the project goes out the way you intend it to be. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Yeah, I'm not. And, Hello. And, yeah. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi from Malaysia. Hey. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi. <laughs> Um, talking about Indian film, did you guys watch The Free Idiots? It's a very good film. Uh, well, they film is right? The three oh, I, rem I know The Free Idiots. It's really, really heartwarming. Mm -hmm. Is it from the mm -hmm. same director that always tells the, st the same sto basic story but in different characters and different storyline? Yeah, I don't that know. know. Yeah, that was a weird way to ask this. I'm sorry, I just don't remember his name. His name is uh, Rajkumar Hirani. The director name is. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thanks. You know, was a you know was a awesome movie that never came out. DreamWorks years ago was working on a Bollywood oh, yes. film. Sorry. And it's like, it's called Monkeys of Mumbai. Mm. And that looks so awesome. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wish that came out. Anyhow, we got to talk about some painting because a lot of painting is going on. Um, maybe we could just talk a little bit about what, what you're doing at this point and wh where you plan on going or any kind of thoughts about your painting currently like how you feel about anything mm -hmm. Andy? Um, for me i think i'm currently like going on the backgrounds because i want to like finish it before i uh, move on with the, with the main characters uh for me if currently i think about it i should uh, focus more on the background more like make it more blurry because right now it feels like too sharp and doesn't have the um how to say the, the background feeling yeah um, mm. I, I feel like 
meeting group on that. Yeah, I remember at this point, I was just like pretty focused on the background just to kind of establish the whole um, lighting and like feel like I wanted to be something just like the photo, like a very like bright, uh, like war like lighthearted kind of uh, painting. Um, and I definitely wanted to keep the flowers at the very end because that was kind of like a fun little thing to add. And not to not to get like too caught up on that because I'm I feel like I would have. So knowing myself, I like held myself back and like, you know, worked a bit on the background and then the foreground, then the dog, and then the flower. So that's I remember thinking about that. I love the colors that you've um, applied there. The green you know, on the top uh, left hand side really, really pops. And it, it totally has that wonderful, warm, light feeling. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, for mine, I I wasn't too happy with uh, how it's going. But now that I've gone through it, I, I definitely appreciate it going through this. Because this is kind of like the start of, all right, whatever that subject is, I'm going to try to change it. You know, I'm going to try to put my own kind of twist on it. And this was kind of like... The beginning of that. Mm -hmm. um, Wendy, I'm, I'm assuming that like you don't really use magma that often, and especially like um, with the limited brushes that are available. Like, <laughs> did you find did you find it like challenging when you were oh, painting with this? Yeah, I actually like um, accidentally press other things that makes it uh, feel much more like how to say the harder. I don't know how to like adjust on the brush, <laughs> but I think for me it's really really fun to um only painting it with only one kind of brush. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Pa it's always fun to just paint with other people as well. You know. Mm -hmm. I remember we were just kind of chatting the whole time, as far as I remember. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's like just hanging. Well, okay, so we went through one question on the question <laughs> thing, and then we stopped. So I'm going to bring on another question. Uh, here's a short one. I will just answer this very quick. Uh, Anonymous asks, is the Schoolism House still on? No, it's not. It was losing money for years. I loved it, but it just kept losing money, and we eventually... We had to close it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually how I met Noah. By the way, Noah's always in the streams, uh, you know, hang out, helping out, and everything. That's how we met. Um, yeah, I I know um, on Discord there's some there's a few people who went to the schoolism, you know, in house. That's you know, come on and hang out with us. Yeah, guy so really as well, cool. right, guy? Yeah, guys, I went. Yeah. Uh, I went. Uh, yeah, that was one of the last ones, I believe. Oh right, yeah, you're you're the lucky one. <laughs> yeah, that, well, you cool. like. I just remember that it was five years ago this week that I met you guys. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Wow. First week, first few, two weeks of January. Oh yeah, we because we went dog sleighing and snowmobiling. Yeah, dude. Just, like in January. Dude, I still dream of that. It's like, <laughs> I'm of everything. Yeah, it that makes sense that you would dream about it too, because I dream about it. And it's like, kind of like that thing um, financially, it never should have existed because it just kept losing money. <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. it was a very special thing because of that, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. We really kind of. I'm very grateful for being able to. To be a part of it. It, it for me it was a big game changer so yeah for those of you that you don't know uh the the schoolism house it started off let me tell you the origin stories which kind of like builds into origin stories of the studio right imaginism studios it started off in my parents uh basement i i moved back home and i was like i'm gonna start a studio and live off of my parents for a while and then they a month later, they're like, yeah, we're going to retire in Taiwan. Uh, see you later. Don't worry. We believe in you. 
<laughs> all right see you later <laughs> and then they left you know and um then you know the studio was in a little apartment and then it became two little apartments and then three little apartments and then we got a house and in this house we all lived together to save some money it was like anybody that couldn't afford a, a place of their own they could live in the house with us right and that was a beautiful thing because any time of the day uh you know three o'clock in the morning five o'clock in the morning there's always somebody up there's always somebody painting and it was such a evolution in everybody's art during that time because we were just engulfed in art we are living breathing eating sleeping art every day maybe not sleeping right because we we're <laughs> just up uh and so when we got a real like official studio we missed that i missed that and wanted to recreate it so we got another house and that house we just you know anybody that wanted to apply to stay at that house um, would be living with your mentor right and then Kay and i we would come in constantly when the house was in toronto and everything um, to hang out with the students as well and then the house moved to montreal that's when things went downhill because that house was like way too big way too expensive and blah 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 had a lake in the back um <laughs> it was like six thousand square feet for four artists plus the mentor you know so it was an amazing amazing uh experience where towards the end of your trip we would also fly in a guest to stay with you as well uh in this case noah got Masse and i and and Kay and justin fields justin mm -hmm. Gobi fields yeah. and we went dog yeah. sliding and snowmobiling together that was a special treat for oh, sure it seems like yeah a dream like just it didn't even happen or something you know it's like so <laughs> long ago now yeah the like, uh, like I, I it's like just surrounding yourself with artists does make a huge difference in just like how you see art how you do art um like the way you absorb it you get to hear like how other people kind of look at it so i think that's what i really learned you know working at the studio because you know bobby you you and Kay, like you guys obviously have like you know um have a good eye for certain things and you know how to <clears throat> explain things so just being exposed to that like made such a difference in how i look at art now and um and and hopefully like even people who are tuning into these like 90 minute art challenges they can kind of experience the same thing and um and i'm sure being on discord as well is like kind of makes a difference for them just like getting to talk to artists who are like you know like-minded and um you know it's like it does suck that the house did close down but i feel like there's so many ways to to get like similar experiences and grow as an artist in different ways man i just realized i i like read that question and i was like okay i'm just gonna say this question real quick remember that? <laughs> yeah it, it opens many doors and like conversations so yeah Good times, good times. I remember mm -hmm. uh, we get to our snowmobiles and Kay and I, we have to share one. And then Kay just gets on. She's like, no, nope, you're on the back. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> oh, man. Okay, all right. Yeah. Oh, she is such was... a speed demon on that thing. It was, it was awesome. I know. I was, I was like, oh, my gosh, you're going so fast. <laughs> yeah, and it yeah. was so cool because we took it over this frozen lake. Remember that, Noah? It was oh, just yeah. like open space. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. It was, I was like driving so slow because it was so pretty. So I didn't care about, you know, being on speed with everyone because I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I've never seen anything like this. I remember mm -hmm. Nikhil slowed us down the most. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was great. No, I love yeah. Nikhil. He's awesome. But yeah. I do yeah. remember like, Oh, what are we waiting for now? Oh, it's Nikhil again. <laughs> he just comes over like super slow. Like, yeah. But he's enjoying himself going super slow. Yeah. Uh, good times. So funny. <laughs>
Hey, um, uh, I wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say a bunch of filler stuff, I guess. You know. Oh, okay. I was going to ask Wendy, like, do you, like, um, the people that you surround yourself with, are they mm. mainly artists or are they kind of like non-artists or, like, I'm just curious, oh. like, because, yeah. like, I, I really enjoy your art and it's, like, got such, like, great aesthetics and stuff. And it, it makes me wonder, like, do you have a lot of, like, um, art friends that you keep close or, like, is it just like you and your like high school friends, for example? I actually have both friends. Like, uh, from high school friends, we haven't like stopped kind of thing. So, so we are still very, very, very like how to say we are very close together as well. Mm -hmm. But um, my art friends are from college, and also my previous my colleagues from previous studio. Yeah. So, but I think lately I have been like uh talking to them like my own colleague more. Mm. Yeah. I surrounding by by both. Mm -hmm. And also for the uh school reason house, I actually like it's so sad to hear that it 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 closed because years ago I remember that I saw the website on uh imaginative uh studio. Yeah. I was like I dream to be able to join that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh yeah like we had the most incredible like we had um nathan faux stay at the house you know and like not just teach just four people but he mm -hmm. was breaking bread with the students you know really living with them for a few days that was really cool mm -hmm. andrea blasich came everybody did statues uh, you know, like so many, uh, Tuna Bora mm -hmm. came just after she won her Annie award. Um, oh, yeah. right. And there's so many amazing artists that stayed at that house. And you're yeah. totally right. Masse. like that whole entire thing of like, it, it helped people to hone in their conversational skills as well right because mm -hmm. it's not just conversational skills it's like having conversations with people that you highly respect a lot of times we freeze up we don't know how to kind of converse mm. <laughs> yeah that's i remember having a lot of trouble just knowing what to say to like big artists but <laughs> you want to just realize yeah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, you, you definitely realize like they're just normal people, but you know, just with very high skills in art. Yeah. And you know, but, if um, anybody is a little hesitant, join the Discord. You know, join the Lightbox Expo Discord first. Then you could just mm -hmm. talk with you know everyday people and stuff like that that are also artists and and get used to it because that's another part of being an artist it's not just the art of uh you know storytelling or painting or whatever it's also the art of conversation mm -hmm. yeah it's i think that's one of my um goals for this year is to get better at conversations and just um I guess being uh yeah just being better at like you know expressing myself and talking like knowing how to describe um art and yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too I, I was like yeah I'm actually the same <laughs> it's actually and, I find like if you get when a person gets better at um kind of communicating their level of art also goes up right mm. like um like sometimes the the conversations that i would have with some artists is like so specific you know it's so freaking specific and if you don't have that ability to kind of um really get in depth in your conversations then you won't be able to communicate as specifically mm. Mm -hmm. And that's why yeah. it helps your art, too. Yeah. Um, when Ian McKay came to Toronto to, the, to record his workshop, 
I remember just kind of just sitting there and admiring like how well he how well his storytelling is and how easy it is to get like absorbed into just anything that he says so like I was I was pretty starstruck like when he came so it was hard for me to um you know have like try to be normal and like have conversations and stuff but I just remember like thinking wow this is like kind of like the the characteristic for a very like you know amazing artist not only in his art but also just his character and personality and i remember just being so like you know amazed by like just how he was and who he was you know you hit it very well masse this is the first time i'm hearing about it <laughs> i i didn't realize i didn't realize that you're starstruck at all you <laughs> felt like very just natural so good for you <laughs> oh, like um like i don't i don't i'm not really into like the star wars world like star wars world or like um you know a lot of the hollywood movies but just like i appreciate his art so much and like i think just seeing videos of him and just how he's so like enthusiastic and just like positive that also like you know enhances his art even more so i think um that's like where I respect Ian so much is like just his art and his just him as a person. <laughs> yeah. Wendy, if you had to give a big like stamp of approval for an artist out there mm. that you met, who would that be? Like a uh, your who would be your Ian McKig? Hmm. For me, for me. <laughs> Oh, no yeah, okay you can't choose me but that's very nice of you oh my gosh because like um the previous interview um to be honest i actually don't want my boyfriend to watch it because i feel like i'm talking like very weirdly or like my train of thought is weird huh <laughs> yeah but he actually watched it and he think like we might have meet, like uh like how to say uh like a short talk between us so he can help me improve on how I can improve on my conversational skill. And he told me that uh, you actually have very, very skillful uh, conversational skill because um, sometimes I have uh, stopped at your, how to say, like, um, uh, I interrupt, yeah, I interrupted your lines, uh, things like that. And he, he said that you can help and you can more than that and uh doesn't make it feels like very awkward yeah he, he told me that so i i feel like wow that's a very very great skill that i never thought of too but yeah oh awesome <laughs> wow that's awesome well thanks <laughs> Uh, <laughs> inburst, inburst. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, let's go to. Congress. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can go to the next. One. <laughs> yeah, let's go another uh, something, <laughs> anything. All right. Thank you for that. All right, so let's go to Jody. Jody asks in Slido, "I'm doing subway sketching right re recently, and I try to draw people more stylized. However, it turns." too realistic in the end do you have any advice thank you well you see this background you probably can't even see this background that i have here but this is going to be cool the next stream on monday boom i'm going to be doing a shop talk about painting and uh or sketching the head specifically and taking us through a little workout Okay, where we're going to be doing profile after profile after profile, and I'm going to do profiles as well. And I would love, I would love to have the opportunity to like have people submit their uh, a photo of their own profiles into Discord. So you know we don't have to have it super public. It's kind of weird if you start posting profiles of yourself on your own Instagram. You know. Um, <laughs> But we could post it into Discord somewhere. Perhaps, uh, Patricia, we were talking about this yesterday, right? Yeah, you can send it in LBX uh, live share links. There's already one posted yeah. there. Yeah, did you see? I put, I put it there. I put it there. The guy with the, the person with the glasses on the far uh, right-hand corner, lower right-hand corner. <laughs> oh, 
just underneath the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's... Hi, Guy. I guess that's Oh, you. that's Guy. That's right all. on. Yeah. That's Guy. Yeah, and you're just underneath the uh, Charlize Theron. Um, a quick little sketch of Charlize <laughs> Theron. And then beside that was uh, Tom Cruise. And then, oh, it uh, looks so good, Bobby. Mike the Tyson. Guy. I have a little Ariana Grande trying to kiss the uh, uh. tablet pen. Um, but yeah, awesome. just it's going to be fun. And it's like stuff that I learned from sketching on the subways for like five years continuously, like every Sunday. So uh, mark your calendars. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, definitely subscribe because there's a lot of very cool things going on. And if I yeah. may, I just want to go through what's happening tomorrow. We we're talking about uh, the Wish Dragon not too long ago. Who is the production designer of Wish Dragon? It's Shelly Wan. So it's going to be the interview with Shelly Wan tomorrow. Then, of course, on Monday, I was saying shop talk and then um, so on and so forth. So don't miss out on that. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Sometimes I write down little uh, talking points as well, you know, before the stream. Um, those seem to go by, go pretty well. So maybe I could kind of pitch one of them and we could kind of discuss. Yeah, All right. So um, if you want to be six, okay, here's a good one. Uh, what's one habit you can adopt that would help your art skills in a positive way? Go to bed early. <laughs> mm. Does it have to be art related or? Um, yeah, I put art skills. Hey, you know what? This isn't really, is this gelling? I don't know if this is gelling. Here's another one. Um, most successful people will search out the knowledge they seek, even if it's knowledge that no one possesses. They will keep searching out that knowledge that they seek, even if nobody possesses it, and they will keep going until they find it, generally. That sounds like Bruce Lini. It's Bobby Chu. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, I know it's you, uh, but that does sound like, like how Bruce Lini, they approach with his work, yeah? And he does like the domes and the arches during the Renaissance. Like he actively search out the architecture, uh, like design that was like forgotten uh, from like the Greek era. They do the column cool. and the amphitheater. Mm -hmm. So he actively this is like from Art History One Hundred One uh, of the West. Uh, that he just like dig dive into like the lost like uh like close to Alexandria Library. Yeah. And sort of like recreated that, and that's what we have like nowadays with the dome uh, of the uh, Va Vatican City, something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, he it's so, the dome. Yeah, in Rome. but it's sort of like he recreated it. Yeah, like he, he accidentally found like this depository of like these designs and also recreated uh, it as well. It means it's like even when knowledge were lost through time, yeah, uh, you could still like recreate it just from like objective like observation. So his sketches are just full of like him just redrawing the same column over and over again. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. And then like when he's able to like learn about the archways and the portal lintel system, like the very old old like, stuff was uh, forgotten. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, I remember, I remember so learning Brusolini also invented all the cranes and everything to be able to get all the supplies up to the dome. And also had like a whole kitchen and layout for everything, all the workers up there so that they could stay up there longer. Yes, yes. Like uh, when he was like patron, uh, because back then like 
be best way for a daily artist like make money and like earn livings that they need to have like Patreon that a patron that helps them out with like just things uh, financially. Uh, so they just like give them like money yet, yeah, but everything has to be like, design and work like all by himself. Yeah. It's like both well, that's architecture. Cool. And all right, let's let's. Uh, I think that was, we get the picture. That's really awesome. <laughs> that's really awesome. I don't want to yeah. you know cut you mm -hmm. off, but I just want to kind of keep things going. Yes. Um, yes. You know, when you were talking, I was thinking about. For some reason, I was thinking about um, Alessandro Carloni. He was the head uh, of story for How to Train Your Dragon. I don't know if you like that movie, but that was one of my favorite animated movies. And yeah. he talked about nice. growing up in Italy, no education in, you know, around him dealing with animation. But he wanted to get into animation so badly that he just kept rewinding playing pausing his his vhs tapes of old disney movies and just learned how to animate that's what i'm talking about you know it's like when you don't have all the resources around you the successful person tends to keep going and tries to you know find the thing it doesn't matter mm -hmm. bobby yes can i add something to what you just said absolutely yeah. Awesome. Um, what you the question you asked reminds me of your interview with Kim Jong Gi, and from his story, it seemed his parents were against him becoming an artist because he was the first born, and still, even though they didn't give him accessibility to the information, the teachers, the books, etc., he still found out a way to find the information and practice and like right now he's one of the most well-respected artists in the industry and he teaches his stuff to like some of the top universities in the states when he visits there i think that's a good example of that yeah thanks for that that was awesome Bro. yeah here's another that's true it's like oh go ahead oh, i was just gonna say like um if you can't find it, like if they can't find what they're looking for, they just, you know, keep seeking for it and just don't stop until they do. So I think that's a pretty good, um, like, thing that those successful people have is like, they're just very persistent. And I think that's what, you know, makes a difference with like, I guess like, you know, the gap between like very good artists and just I don't want to say re regular artists or just like Novice. artists who kind of artists that are just like content with where they are. Yeah. I, I think then there's the artists that just complain, you know, and that <laughs> I understand the complaining, but it doesn't do you any mm -hmm. good. That's mm -hmm. my thing about that. And, you know, there are things, of course, there are ex uh, situations where you should complain. But some people have turned up that sensitivity sensitivity knob up way too high and they just complain about everything. And then their life, generally, it's not a happy life. And you wonder why. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. why aren't you happy? Well, it's because you complain about everything. <laughs> right? One, one of my favorite interviews last year or favorite guests last year um, was Hari from uh, Vienna. You know, how he mm. talked about, I asked him the first memory of him doing art and it was drawing on his neighbor's car. Remember that? And then he was like, yeah, it's because my parents couldn't afford paper to draw on. And that was a nice yeah. flat surface. You know, mm -hmm. he didn't have shoes. Mm -hmm. Even when he started school late because his parents, his family couldn't afford to send him to school as a tiny, like to start school. So he had to start late a couple years. And when he started, he still had no shoes. So he was the only kid pretty much, I think, in school that didn't have shoes, right? Yet through all of that, he is the happiest person, <laughs> you know? Like when we met him, holy cow, he's just nothing but smiles. And he wouldn't trade that experience for anything. Right. Mm -hmm. That was that was uh, very inspiring 
for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He sounds like a protagonist of his own story. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, be happy with less, aim for more. You'll always have a pretty good life, I think. You know. I think um, for me, uh, I guess this is just me personally. Like, if I have the the time to complain about certain things, it's like I could be using that time to research how to, you know, make it better. So it's like if you're complaining, you kind of just yeah. you're just stopping. <laughs> you're not you're like not going anywhere. If anything, you're going like a bit backwards. <laughs> but you know, it's it's fine to complain. It's just. It's not fine to complain all the time about the same thing. It's like, then do something about it. <laughs> I guess to be just a bit harsh. Yeah. I like the little. I, I forget who said this. I don't know if it was. For some reason, I'm thinking it's Beyonce. For some reason, but <laughs> it was just like, uh, whoever that was said, if something bad happens, I don't. I, I give myself a certain amount of time. To complain, whine, cry, whatever, and I start. And I know how much time I got left, you know, and I get it all out. And after that time, mm-hmm. move on. I, mm, I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. Yeah, you you gotta somehow get it out of your system, and I think it's very wise to choose where you release that kind of energy. Yeah, it. I think that matters a lot. I think so, Twitter is um, a good place, isn't it? Where is a good place? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna be like, the worst place could be Twitter because you could say the wrong thing, and that could just make the situation like ten times worse. <laughs> but um, yeah, having having a reliable like or like a friend that you know will look past your complaining and know who you are, so it's like they'll kind of like take you in for who you are. So, you <laughs> like luckily, it. I have my boyfriend. Who listens to all my complaints about anything? <laughs> and you got two beautiful furry children to complain to. Your cats, you know. <laughs> They'll just look at me like I'm crazy. So yeah. that makes me but look also, at it in a different person. <laughs> also, I you know a lot of times they feel that energy, right? And then they come to mm. you, and then they they like let you kind of <laughs> pet them and stuff. You're like, ah, I feel a little better. <laughs> Yeah, I, Wendy, is it the same for you? Where you're just like yeah. <laughs> talking to your dog? Yeah, Dogs are I just talk to you like yeah. a baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't have a dog even anymore. What's that? <laughs> oh, I was saying, like, because uh, even though he's big, I like to like flip him off, like hanging, like hugging like a baby, like he's here. And I like, like doing this to him. <laughs> yeah. I wish my cats were like that. <laughs> they just run away. All right. So why don't we go to another question here? Um, Sawyer says, <clears throat> what's a personal tactic specifically to you? Do you or that you do in order to get past a barrier or get motivated? So getting motivated, getting past barriers. Can we talk about this a little bit? Do anybody, um, does anybody have any thoughts about getting motivated? Well, you guys know mine. It's just like I think about the lazy Bobby is a different Bobby than this Bobby. And like sometimes that lazy Bobby wants to like, yeah, say a bunch of shh shit in my ear you know like stop drawing go you know let's go lay down let's go take a nap all that stuff and when i hear that lazy bobby talking to me i'm aware that that is not me that mm-hmm. is lazy bobby so usually what i tend to do is i grab that voice and i smack it in the face i tell it sit back down i'm not done yet i'm in control here and you're not gonna tell me what to do and then i keep going that that reminds me of that um the book uh the war of art uh by stephen pressfield how he always says oh, like I love that you know one. yeah th- that's a really good one it's saying how yeah. like um uh 
uh, what does he say? Uh, like those things are not you, and it's like, pre- like just pretending that it's like something outside of your body that's trying to take control of you and trying to like just yeah punch it in the face. Um, <laughs> that that's a really good way of thinking about it. It's like you know telling yourself you know this isn't you, this is something else. It's a force that's trying to take control, but you just somehow have to like fight fight it and you know win that battle. You know, it was really interesting to me. I, I heard this thing where it's just like, um, oh, shoot, I'm going to go off topic here. Wendy, or do you want to add to this topic before? Like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm curious to hear it. <laughs> For yeah. me, um, I, I usually, if I have like, a, like very, uh, how to say, like, uh, uh, like something that caught my mind and I have to like let it go, I will write down. Like what is those things that uh that bothers me, and then I just put it aside and move on. How do you mm-hmm. stay so motivated? I want to know that one because you're a little too <laughs> motivated. I would say like you need to take care of yourself more and like slow it down. <laughs> oh, for me, I I don't know. I just want to like keep on going. I don't. Know. But to be honest, with you, sometimes there is a very down downtime but i don't let it go so um it will keep me motivated mm. i think mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very yeah, cool motivation is hard motivation is hard sometimes yeah i you know okay so this was the thing i was going to mention before um and again this okay this is a bobby fact you got to look this up make sure it's true i'm not too sure but what i seem to remember was that um most drugs are not the drug they are on switches for your brain to produce the drug so in other words your brain could already produce these drugs that alter your state right which to me means like yeah my brain is not me that's a that's a part of me but my consciousness and my brain are two separate things. My brain is like an organ. It's like a muscle. It's like, you know, a body part. And sometimes it acts up. Right? And that's mm. not me, though. And to separate that, mm. those two really helped me. Because, mm. like, shoot, I feel like this because of the stuff I just ate. That's not me. I never should have ate, <laughs> like, three candy bars and, and you know, a Coke and... and uh, a, extra large coffee Mm. right that's not your conscious you that's that's like things uh, influencing you and there's like Mm. these two halves of us yeah i i do like the fact that like you know thinking that way can help break things down and like i think once you understand that it's like it's up to you like um to decide like how you want to control that it's like is it because you're not yeah is it because you're eating this specific type of food then you know cut that up if you know that it's gonna make you in this like a version that's not supposed to be you if it's like if it's tv that you just get like you know so absorbed into it it's like find a way to cut that out like make it hard to get there so that you know the real you will come out Yeah, there's certain things I like to eat to um, to be more motivated and have a clearer mind. You know, that's kind of weird, right? Is that kind of weird? No. Like, I'm very curious. <laughs> oh, I uh, I'm into krill oil. You know, instead of um, like, mm-hmm. what's it called? I guess usually people would have fish liver oil of some sort right i i use krill oil and that seems to like just kind of give me a little tiny boost of clarity i feel mm. again this is bobby fact i don't know maybe it's placebo and then i just <laughs> if i eat too much fried stuff then i'll take a big break because that definitely slows mm-hmm. down my thinking and makes me very sluggish white rice mm-hmm. makes me very mm-hmm. sluggish 
The carbs. Yeah. Certain carbs will make me more sluggish than others. At one time I noticed mm. when I ate a lot of uh, a lot of s- sushi co- consistently, it made me kind of pissed off. <laughs> It was weird. <laughs> yeah, cuz I'm like, what am I pissed about? I'm not pissed about anything. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It yeah. It's funny. It's like your body just reacts, but your brain's like, but this isn't me. Yeah. Just can't help it. I guess it's certain chemicals and yeah. <laughs> Shall we go on to another topic here? Um, I would love yeah. to just mention for one second here the the foreground foliage that you both added did so much to your paintings, mm-hmm. right? It really kind of brought in the audience into the scene. Don't you mm-hmm. feel? Oh, I yeah. like Wendy's flowers in the front. It's like so dainty, and it and it stands out a lot because it's like the. The way you contrasted the flower and the rock makes it like pop out even more. Oh, thank you. I actually want to make it so it creates a line towards the dog. Oh, cool. Uh, well, also everything that you're like you were mentioning, um, the background you wanted to make it blurrier, but actually at this point, because there's so much contrast in the foreground, like I don't even notice that in the background anymore. Yeah, it like oh, works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it totally works out in the end. Uh, and I love your your version of your dog. It looks exactly like your your <laughs> dog. And the t- I like how you mentioned it. Remember Bobby like when you pointed out the the tongue, you thought it was dirt, but it's actually the pattern that's on your dog's tongue. Yeah. <laughs> I like those I little like... those little touches. Yeah, I love that too. I was like uh, should add some flower as well, like from from mm-hmm. your from your advices. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vicky, it looks like she uh, your dog is eating the flowers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like how your yeah. like both of yours resembles the photo, and then you got the mine, <laughs> and it's like <laughs> what's going on there. Yeah, I, but I do love the design. It you, you created so much like in less than 19 minutes. Oh, thanks. Okay. Yeah, I love yours too. It's awesome. Um, when we go to another, does anybody in Discord have any questions? We haven't really given anybody any chance to ask any questions. I do. Sure. Bobby? It's okay. Could I ask something? Oh. Well, say something? Anybody, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, for years, you've been posting videos like of uh, punching laziness in the face. Yeah, <laughs> it's always very funny to me. <laughs> for sure, that's that's just what it's all to about. Mention that you gotta psych yourself up. You know, you know what I mean. Like sometimes you just gotta psych yourself up. When you're feeling a little lazy and stuff. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I just find it very very funny. Like I would sometimes draw and like um have your voice in the in the background while I was drawing and you were saying like punch lacing us in the face and that was so funny. <laughs> so thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, I made like a thousand wristbands. Um, I made a thousand wristbands that say punch laziness in the face because I, I really wanted, you know, a wristband to say that, right? And I had to make a thousand because it's like a minimum purchase of a thousand or something like yeah, that we need one now and then i, I start well hey if we ever meet you let me know and if i have one i'll give you mine <laughs> oh that's so sweet thank you yeah if anybody sees me if anybody sees me anywhere <laughs> and you see i got a r- green wristband on you'll know what that wristband means that, that says punch laziness in the face and if you ask me for it, I'll give it yeah. to you. I'll give it to you. You tell me a good story about, you know, about your journey, your artistic journey. And for sure, I give you one or your hopes and dreams, you know, because like there's a bunch of people out there. There's hundreds of people out there where I made a deal with them 
that I would give them my wristband that I stare at when I get up in the morning and psych myself up and all that stuff. Uh, I would give that to them as long as we made a deal and we'll make a deal right now, you and me, okay? Give me your address later. Okay. I'll send you a wristband. <laughs> but we have to make a deal right now on the stream. And that deal is what, whatever your artistic goal is, you will not quit until you get there. And then whenever that is, if we meet again, whatever, you're going to tell me your success story. All right? That's the deal. Okay, okay, got it, Bobby. That's right. You <laughs> see, you my address. I like how you had to think about it a little bit because now I know that you're serious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see that wristband and, and never like try to quit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, Jamie, if you're on here, maybe, or Patricia, maybe, yeah, actually, Patricia, would you be able to get. Um... Yeah, I know, Sophie. We, we will make it happen. Yeah, we'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. The bet is made and it's recorded, so <laughs> yes. can't wait to see. Can't wait to hear more about it in the future. Yes, when you're accepting your Oscar, you hold up your wristband and you go, that's how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> This is for you, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Oh, awesome. All right. So uh, here's another thing that I wrote down here. Um, this is something that I, I like live by pretty much. When you have no job, work twice as hard on your own art. It will remind you of the joy of creating art for yourself. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. And it also attracts jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, it, but it it's attracts. like work twice as hard when you don't have a job. Um, I don't know how anybody feels about that, but that's how that's how I've been able to kind of like have a pretty decent career for the last 15 years. You know, anytime we don't have a job, anytime we have any time off, like we're doing something. Currently, Masse and I, we're just chilling right now, um, waiting for the next thing to start or whatever. Things are bubbling up, people are calling and mm -hmm. stuff, and uh, we definitely feel like it's around the corner. But until then, we're going to keep doing these streams like so hardcore, you know? Mm -hmm. It really works. I don't yeah, think that one's really debatable or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I I can I'm just yeah, I agree. I totally agree because then it's like especially like when you put in a lot of effort with the art that you like, then that's that's going to attract people uh to the work that you are, you know, most happy about and you like and and if that turns into a job that's like you know even better so i think when you have the time like really put in the effort because in the end it will pay you know it'll come back how do you feel about uh personal art wendy like um y you know like that's kind of a weird question but i don't know mm -hmm. I, I, you do a lot of it right you do a lot of personal mm -hmm. art I, I haven't been doing it um, for quite a long time, like a few months, because yeah. uh, because of work lately. But I do inspire by you guys because you guys have works and you have own own personal works as well. And also, you you guys did doing the stream. It's just like doing a lot of things together. So so I'm very inspired by you. Oh. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> well, I'm I'm very inspired by your work ethic, Wendy, and uh, everything that you've been doing, which is why we keep bugging you to do more stuff with us. <laughs> I hope there will be more. <laughs> I enjoy it so much. Mm -hmm. And just like a dream come true. 
Here's another one I wrote down uh, earlier. I, it says, um, if you want to be successful, a great habit to do is aim to be a good role model, especially when no one is even looking. Mm. Right? I, that really came from just watching and experiencing uh, my many different friends becoming parents. Because when you become a parent, you mm -hmm. tend to want to be a good role model now, right? All the time. The emphasis is increased. So I was just thinking, yeah, why does it need to w wait till we're parents? You know, why can't we just start now? Mm -hmm. That's that's really good. It's like putting, having that kind of mindset. Um, it's like kind of making yourself accountable in a way. It's like. I think, yeah, I, I, I like that quote. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, oh, wow, that, that is really good because it's like if you were someone else and you looked at yourself, it's like, would you want them to be your role model? If not, like, what can you do better? Or like, what can you improve? Or how do you want to change yourself? So, yeah. When you feel like some, somebody impressionable, it, you know, is watching or something, then you act differently. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so I just wanted to write that one down. Does anybody want to <laughs> add to that or anything? Yeah. All right, well, I got another one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the other one was one that I mentioned right in the beginning, um, but then we skipped over it. So if you want to be, or oh, sorry, what was it? What's, nah, you know what? I went through all of them. We also have some slider <laughs> questions. Mm -hmm. I have a question if you don't mind. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for, for anyone. Um, I've been struggling with figuring out why just making pretty pictures isn't as good as storytelling and meaning um, in illustration. Could you shed any light on that? Let's say, Wendy? Like, like the importance of storytelling. Oh, why? why sorry. Um, the question was, why is it better... Why is storytelling better than just pretty pictures? Yeah, exactly. I think um, for me, the way I think about it is like, um, I guess pretty pictures can be more of like a surface thing where you just look at it and you're like, oh, that's really pretty. But when in, when there's like a story behind it, I think um, when you start like looking at um, your own experiences and your own like um, stories and when you can relate to that it's like it's like another part that um maybe a person can connect to and i think that's kind of like a like a a way to you know pull at certain strings you know heart strings with certain people mm -hmm. and that's kind of what like stands out to them because i guess on like especially like on instagram there's there are a lot of pretty pictures and like a lot of people react to it but then is it memorable? Like perhaps, but I feel like the ones that like really connect with, um, you know, people the most is what's like remembered the most. Um, mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily need to like be your own stories, but like just seeing a story and like understanding that, um, I feel like it makes it more like, it leaves a bit like a bigger impression. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that's just how I see it. I don't know about you guys, Bobby Thanks. and Wendy. Wendy, did you, do you have any thoughts on yeah. this? I actually agree with what I say. So <laughs> I, I think I don't have anything to add on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I also agree with Missy. And I, I think, <laughs> I think we could also expand this a little bit, you know, like first your statement is story 
better than uh, you know more important than the than a good painting mm-hmm. yeah is it or is it because like some things i'm thinking of things like uh things that maybe don't have a story but are totally awe-inspiring mm-hmm. right like just gorgeous like when you see the northern lights i've never seen the northern lights but if i saw it i'd freaking freak out and i'd be like mm-hmm. that's totally awe-inspiring i can't take my eyes off mm-hmm. of it um mm-hmm. so what's the connection there between stories and that experience of some seeing something awe-inspiring right i right. I think like the story is one very, very popular and effective vehicle to create that emotion, that strong emotion, whether it's awe-inspiring, crying, sadness, happiness, whatever. And that's what we are attracted to. That's the Mm. part of the art that we're really attracted to is like feeling something, right? And that's Mm. how you could see the people that really love abstract art most likely it's because of the feeling that it gives them uh when they put it in their room in this giant room this big you know abstract painting on top of their little tiny sofa in this giant room it's like that's really cool i like that feeling um Mm -hmm. right so it's it's all about focusing on the feeling and and then how do you get there maybe it's story Mm-hmm. so it's kind of so, like um story and maybe pretty pictures are almost like the same like not be. none of like it's one isn't more important than the other but i guess it comes down to the feeling right right thank you that's an awesome and enlightening answer thank you guys mm-hmm. you're welcome you got a good radio like ASMR voice <laughs> or whatever oh, it thank is. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, um, so uh, go ahead, say sorry. No, I was I was about to say, um, like for my personal artwork, like I try my best to add story, and you know because I just want um, that kind of part incorporated into my illustrations but then there's obviously times where i'm just like i have nothing i don't know what to do so i'm gonna mm-hmm. you know i end up doing like things that i'm you know is with is within my comfort zone and i feel like i i tell myself that's okay because you know it's what i enjoy and it's like what makes me happy so but then at the same time i still want to have like the story aspect in my artwork so mm-hmm. um i like I try to balance my the stuff that I come out with with both so that like you know it makes me happy and it also makes you know my audience happy mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah I try not to I I try to like tell people like you know maybe like it's still like just find a good balance between like what you want to do and what you want to achieve mm. nice did you make the collar into bow tie on yours say I did. I thought I saw that in the reference photo, so I made it a bit bigger. That's an awesome little story element that you added in there. And I also love the butterfly or the moth or whatever on on the nose. That was so nice. Uh, Thanks. (laughs) And Wendy's, yours is so nice too. Maybe we could go Mm -hmm. into some final thoughts about our paintings. Mm -hmm. What would you do differently if you're to do it again? Things that were successful for you, things that maybe were a bit more challenging, stuff like that. For me, I feel like um, because I'm very new to the uh, app, um, it's quite challenging for me to how to like uh, formalize it with with the uh, painting because uh, I I tend to use a uh, special brush and uh, mold on brushes a lot of time because it help me helps me on creating better lighting uh, mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, uh, yeah, nice things. Um, so uh, if I can do it better, I feel like um, I will try to uh, do a lot more on the, uh, how to say, not only rely on the mold, but uh, uh, make it more, how to say, can create on 
painting only. <laughs> I'm not sure if that sound correct. That sounds great. Um, Miss mm -hmm. I wish I pushed the flower color saturation a bit more. I wish I bumped it up so that it's like, you know, it adds more to the uh, the feel of the painting. You know, like a it's like a happy place. <laughs> um, I kind of like the the like a you know a the cartoony or version of my dog's face. That was fun to do. Um, Maybe like push the lighting a bit more. That would have been kind of cool. On the dog. Uh, yeah, just on the dog, like the little highlights. Like maybe if I like made it a bit more, like you know, if I made it more white, then it would have like, you know, shined more. <laughs> I really like how the both of yours are, you know, very similar and so different at the same time. Um, yeah, I really do appreciate the fact that there's a there isn't much blending going on in Wendy's, right? And that was the thing mm -hmm. that Wendy you're kind of concerned about in the beginning or you yeah. wanted to change, but it actually worked out very well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. contrasting to that, Massey's like, holy smokes, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> it's just like a picture from, from the reference. Yeah. It's so nice. <laughs> I do remember as I was painting mine, I was like, uh, should I be doing this? This seems really challenging. Um, I think what it, what it was were those trees. They're just way too contrasting. Like when you look at the contrast between the trees and the parts behind the trees, and then you look at the reference photo, and you look at the trees and the stuff behind the trees, it isn't nearly as contrasting as what I was mm -hmm. doing. And that made those trees pop out way too much and didn't have them mix in with the foliage as much. Mm -hmm. um, so like a, the value is too yeah. dark? Uh, well, just too contrasting. I, I feel like the values can be okay. It can be like that, but I just mm -hmm. need to mix in more darker mm. values in the green stuff mm. in the background yeah right like in between the trees mm -hmm. that would have helped and it would have helped to separate that part from um the trees that or the the foliage that you see just underneath the trees mm, right? that I see that would make that foliage more of this um flat plane that's parallel to the ground and then everything mm. behind it would start to feel more like foliage receding into the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I like the fact that um, you went with purple with the trees because <laughs> it, no, because like it, it totally makes sense with like the, the colors that you chose because if the, the trunks were, you know, like the reddish um, warmer brown, then there's, it would have, been a bit of like a disconnect between the the world that you you created and and the tree it's like oh where did this realistic tree come out from from this like you know this very like magical like um mystical forest that this creature is in so yeah i thought it was really cool how you went with that color just works you know well and i think you guys are super cool too 10 out of 10. <laughs> you. And, uh, you know, now's a good time to kind of just mention again, hey, check out the next two stream. We're going to be talking about portraits and we're going to be painting portraits together, sketching them. Um, each one of these took me a maximum of like less than 20 minutes, you know, so the way that I'm going to be teaching is going to be really, really fun on Monday. But before that, Tomorrow, we're going to have an interview with production designer, uh, artist extraordinaire, Shelly Wan. So come join us back for that. And uh, as for now, 
just want to say thank you for tuning in everybody in youtube discord community discord mods <laughs> jamie marshall in the in the youtube and facebook helping out and uh my co-host Maseki. and of course the biggest thank you goes to our guest today wendy tan thank you wendy for joining thank us thank you wendy thank you thank so you much. wendy thank you